absence is any picture of a serving U.S. president meeting a serving leader of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. As this summit approaches, we are entering uncharted, unpredictable territory. Yes, a report which drives home just what is at stake here in Singapore. Nobody wants to go back to war. Well, let's talk to Song Yoon Lee. He is a professor of Korean studies at the Fletcher School. He's in our Boston studio for us. Professor Lee, welcome to you. Before we talk, let me just play you, before we start, just a few seconds of this walkabout this evening. Uh, Kim Jong-un walking around Singapore, cheered by people as he went. Let's just listen in. So what do you make of that, Professor Lee? Here is a man that was, we were told six months ago, was the biggest threat to Western stability, to America, now walking around Singapore treated like a rock star. Well, this is how the people take delight in learning to love Big Brother. But seriously, it's not the fault of the public. Of course, the public is swayed by these dramatic developments. If you told me that the Earth was flat, I might even believe you, not being a scientist. Um, Kim Jong-un has really affected, in my estimation, the most dramatic image makeover over the past few months, from Rocket Man on a suicide mission, from a funny-looking, weird dictator. He has now become a legitimate, reasonable global statesman with whom the world can do business, with whom the U.S. can do nuclear business. So this is a big plus for Kim Jong-un. But more importantly, Kim, in having this summit with the U.S. president, president seeks to buy time and money to do what he really desires, which is to perfect his own nuclear posture review to be rolled out at a future date of his choosing. North Korea has been trying to perfect the bomb for five decades. A state like that, that has to contend with a far more successful, richer, more pleasant, freer Korean state across the border that is a magnet to North Korea's own people, will not give it up. This is a charade, it's a ploy, and we've seen this game repeatedly in the past. No question it is a big plus, and it is Donald Trump that has done this, but how will it be playing, do you think, in Pyongyang? Because it strikes me, this is exactly what his father and his grandfather before him wanted. They wanted to be fated by the international community and they wanted specifically to sit next to a sitting U.S. president. So how will it be going down at home? Yes, that's right. And history is a guide to the future, of course. You know, the last time a U.S. president was gearing up to meet with his North Korean counterpart was back in 2000. And that year, Kim Jong-un's father, Kim Jong-il, came out of his shell, paid his first visit to China six years after inheriting power, just as Kim Jong-un has done this March, six years after assuming power. Uh, visiting China, that is. Why did Kim Jong-il do that in May 2000? Because he had an inter-Korean summit coming up in June. And then in July 2000, Kim II received Vladimir Putin in Pyongyang. And that was the first ever visit by a Russian or former Soviet leader. And then he sent a special envoy to President Bill Clinton in October, who carried the proposition for a summit with Clinton. And many people don't remember today, but Clinton, as unprepared, as impulsive as it was, was very keen on making history and visiting Kim Jong-il in Pyongyang. Madeleine Albright, the U.S. Secretary of State, was there toasting Kim Jong-il in late October. And then in January 2001, Kim paid a visit to the Special Economic Zone in the southern province of China. And everyone hailed this visit as the coming of a Korean Deng Xiaoping, the Chinese paramount leader who led his nation on a more constructive path of reform and opening. So just imagine when Kim Jong-un, after having ensnared Trump in a lengthy process of of denuclearization negotiation process instead of a final resolution or agreement, speaks at the UN General Assembly, visits China, Moscow, meets with the Japanese Prime Minister. He will have completed his image makeover and he will have completely changed the dynamics in his favor. So how far can Donald Trump go at this meeting, which bearing in mind is now more of a getting to know you session, 
without being played like that. You see, people say North Korea is unpredictable. I think that betrays poor diction. North Korea's approach to statecraft is unconventional, but when unpredictable behavior just continues, there's an element of predictability to this. So Kim Jong-un has ensnared Trump for future post-summit meetings. He has invited Trump to Pyongyang, and Mr. Trump even said, well, maybe one day I'll invite